Hello, my name is Scott Fromey and welcome to the Backwoodsman's Institute. Well, here it is, uh, middle January, snows are going, and I'm sitting here in, my, in the cabin here, and I'm going through some paperwork and some stuff, and what I'm actually doing is planting my garden for next year. It's January, like I said, it's middle winter, spring's right around the corner. February will be the, the month to start planting your, getting your, your plants started. Some of your early growing plants, cabbage, broccoli, stuff like that. So I'm actually planting my garden. Now, one of the things that you want to look or think about when you're planting a garden is really what do you expect out of your garden? Are you just planting just for fun or just to grow some or just maybe grow vegetables to kind of supplement your your food for for the endurance during the summer months well you wouldn't need that much um, plants or you wouldn't need that much you know, big of a vegetable garden I think they call it like a like a, a salad garden where you're actually growing just things that kind of eat out of it during the summer but for me you know as far as my garden helps supplement my food throughout the year. So not only am I taking fresh produce off during the summer months, but the excess I'm planning on, on you know, canning and, and putting that up, preserving some of that stuff so that I have produce to eat year-round, basically. And part of that planning process goes through is how much am I going to be eating, or how much am I going? How many people am I going to be growing for? And then look at how much space or how much ground I'm actually going to commit to growing a garden in. It don't take very big space to grow, you know, a lot of uh, vegetables, and it really don't. And that's where it takes planning. So you're going to be starting out with your early season plants. And as they're done, rotating that out into your more of your summer months, growing vegetables, and planting again in the fall. So you're rotating that. One of the things I like to start out with, there's all kinds of information out there on, on gardening and, and how much to garden. But one of the books that I've um, referred to a lot is uh, Ball's Blue Book. This is... And edition here was, I probably had this since early 90s, so I'm sure that the covers changed and stuff like that, but the, the content's usually about the same. In the back of the book, they got a couple charts in there, a garden planning guide as far as, you know, as amount of food that's to be grown and, and preserved for a family of, say, six or four people. It depends on which chart you go off of and it tells you you know like certain types of vegetables here's got beets and carrots and and corn and and okra and it'll tell you like how many how big a row you need to plant to produce a certain amount of like to get so many quarts of let's let's just take beans for example <coughs> I know about how many quarts of beans I need to put up for the for the summer. Now the, the the problem that I've had in the past is I'll plant a row of beans, but it takes a little bit for it to get up to full scale, you know, producing beans, which is enough to make, you know, a batch a can of batch of seven quarts. That's what my canner holds is seven quarts. So in order to get that much beans, you know, I gotta pick a lot of beans for for a batch of seven quarts. And sometimes, you know, if you don't plant a big enough row, <coughs> then you don't get enough. You don't. You have to wait several days to get a big enough batch to run. You know, you can you can can smaller batches, but it's not very efficient. And if you're after a garden to be efficient, you need to be take you know that in consideration. What I do is I'll plant a, 
row of a bush type bean and I'll plant a lot of beans and then that way when it comes on there's enough to start canning right away and then I'll either you know eat some of it can some of it give some of it away but I always got plenty of it there to can and then when I reached what I think is enough of putting up enough jars of beans I'll plow down a majority of it and just keep enough just for supplement my usage during the summer and plant something else and that's the part of planning and planting a garden things like that you need to take into consideration so how long that it's going to tie up that space and what you're going to put into that space as soon as you took off what you need to take off out of there so by studying the different types of varieties and and that doing your homework I'll give you a better plan no plan is probably perfect but it has something to start out with so I, I take what I learned from past years and apply it and and work that out so that's what you need to be doing when you're when you're planning is is where you're going to be planting it at you know and and what how long is it going to take to grow and what you're going to be producing off of there and so you can be rotating the the crops throughout the different seasons like i said earlier you got the spring early plants then you got the summer plants that grow better in the summer when it's when it's hot and then by that time that that season's over with you start planting your fall plants which is a lot similar to the plants that you would plant in the springtime so like lettuce for instance is is a cool season type of plant. So you plant that in early spring and you eat off of it, but a loose leaf variety because you cut it and it grows back. That's something that keeps going, kind of like spinach is the same way. You can pull leaves off and be eating on, on that. And then as the summer is, it gets hot and it bolts and goes to seed, turn it under and plant another, another something else in there. And then let that grow and then in the fall you can grow right back and plant lettuce again. Now it isn't wise to really plant the same plant in the same spot all the time. You want to kind of rotate that out because of the different types of insects and bugs that are in that area. Let's say squash or pumpkin. You get some squash bug on there. <clears throat> plant it in one spot one year and then go to another spot you know another year. So really It'd be best if you had several different spots where you can rotate into and that's where planting comes into because once spring comes it's pretty hectic and if you got a plan it just makes it that much more simple so catch you guys later